Hi, in today's video we will be talking about the five types of autism, their characteristics, diagnosis and treatments. Before we get started, please make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the information I'll be sharing about autism in my weekly videos. So, what is autism? Autism is a complex neurodevelopmental disorder that affects communication, social interaction, and behavior. It is a spectrum disorder, which means that the symptoms and severity can vary widely between individuals. Until 2013, experts talked about different types of autism, such as scanners, Asperger syndrome, pervasive developmental disorder, Rett syndrome, and childhood disintegrative disorder. But since 2013, when the DSM-5 was published, which stands for Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition, all the five types of autism were connected in a single diagnosis called autism spectrum disorder. So, let's briefly talk about each of the five types. In case you want to know more for each of these types, please check my dedicated videos on them. I will add some links below or you can find them in my channel. First type of autism, plastic autism. This is the most well-known type of autism and is usually diagnosed in early childhood. Children with classic autism often have delayed language development, difficulty with social interaction, and engage in repetitive behaviors or routines. They may also have difficulty with sensory processing, such as being overly sensitive to certain sounds or textures. Second, Asperger's syndrome. Individuals with Asperger's syndrome may have average or above average intelligence and good language skills, but may struggle with social interactions and have difficulty understanding social cues. They may have specific interests or hobbies and can become very knowledgeable in these areas. Third, Pervasive Developmental Disorder This type of autism is diagnosed when an individual has some but not all of the symptoms of classic autism or Asperger's syndrome. Individuals with PDD may have difficulties with social interactions, communication and repetitive behaviors, but their symptoms may not fit neatly into the diagnosis criteria for classic autism or Asperger's syndrome. Four, childhood disintegrative disorder. This type of autism is very rare and typically diagnosed after the age of two. Individuals with CTD will typically develop normally until around age two, but then begin to lose skills such as language, social interaction, and motor skills. They may also experience seizure or other medical issues. Fifth and last, Red syndrome. This is a genetic disorder that primarily affects girls and is caused by a mutation in the MECP2 gene. Girls with Red syndrome will typically develop normally for the first 6 to 18 months of life, but then begin to lose moral and communication skills. They may experience seizure and other medical issues and often have difficulty with breathing and digestion. It is important to note that these types of autism are not always clear-cut and some individuals may have symptoms that overlap with multiple types. It is also important to remember that every individual with autism is unique and may have their own set of challenges and strengths. Their severity varies as well. As you can see in this graph that scales autism types with a numerical value from 1 to 100, Asperger is quite mild while red syndrome severe. The diagnosis of autism involves a comprehensive evaluation by a team of professionals, 
which may include a pediatrician, a neurologist, child psychiatrist, speech-language pathologist, psychologist, and occupational therapist. The evaluation process typically involves the following steps. First, developmental screening. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that all children be screened for autism at their 18 to 24 months well child visit. This screening involves asking parents questions about their child's development and observing the child's behavior during the appointment. Second, comprehensive evaluation. If a child is found to be at risk for autism during the developmental screening or if concerns arise later on, a comprehensive evaluation will be conducted. This evaluation typically includes a review of medical and developmental history, observation of the child's behavior, and play. Also, they will be standardized tests to assess cognitive, language, and social development. Third, diagnostic criteria. To be diagnosed with autism, an individual must meet the criteria outlined in the DSM-5. The DSM-5 criteria includes deficit in social communication and interaction, and the presence of restricted and repetitive behaviors. Fourth and last, additional assessments. In some cases, additional assessments may be necessary to rule out other medical or developmental conditions that may be contributing to the individual's symptoms. These assessments may include hearing and vision tests, genetic testing, and neuroimaging studies. The diagnosis of autism is not always straightforward and may require ongoing monitoring and evaluation. Early diagnosis and intervention can make a significant difference in improving outcomes for individuals with autism. If you have concerns about your child's development or behavior, talk to your pediatrician or a qualified healthcare provider to discuss next steps. Once you have diagnosed a child with autism, then the next step is to find the right treatment. The treatment of autism typically involves a multidisciplinary approach that addresses the core symptoms of the disorder as well as any co-occurring condition or challenges. The treatment of autism typically involves a multidisciplinary approach that addresses the core symptoms of the disorder as well as any co-occurring condition or challenges. The treatment plan should be individualized and tailored to the unique needs of each individual with autism and may include the following components. Behavioral and educational interventions. Behavioral and educational interventions are evidence-based approaches that can improve communication, social skills, and behavior in individuals with autism. Examples of these interventions include applied behavior analysis, speech therapy, and social skills training. Medications. There are no medications that can cure autism but medication may be prescribed to manage specific symptoms such as anxiety, depression, or aggression. The use of medications should be carefully monitored by a healthcare provider. Last, alternative therapies. Some individuals with autism may benefit from alternative therapies such as occupational therapy, music therapy, or art therapy. These therapies can help to improve sensory processing, motor skills, and emotional regulation. It is very important to note that parent training and support plays a crucial role in the treatment of autism. Parent training and support programs can help parents to learn effective strategies for managing behavior, promoting communication and social skills, and accessing resources and services. The treatment of autism should be tailored to the individual needs of each person with autism, as there is no one-size-fits-all approach.
Early diagnosis and intervention are critical in improving outcomes for individuals with autism. And ongoing monitoring and adjustment of the treatment plan may be necessary as the individual's needs change over time. To conclude, while autism is typically thought of as a single disorder, there are actually several different types of autism that vary in terms of their symptoms, severity, and prognosis. Regardless of the specific type of autism, early diagnosis and interventions are critical in improving outcomes for individuals with autism. I hope this video provided you with a better understanding about the different types of autism, characteristics, diagnosis, and treatments. If you have any questions, make sure you type them in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next